basically artificial intelligence maps input to output. Sounds super fancy, but on a mathematical level, it's basically doing function approximation. So basically okay. you can, it's kind of predicting something exactly. Uh -huh. So basically once AI has learned from that data, for example, I give it an input and then I have a predicted output. For example, what we say is something called supervised learning. It's one of the areas of artificial intelligence. There's a lot more like mm -hmm. unsupervised learning, a reinforcement learning, deep learning, and all these things. But let's maybe stick with supervised learning for a second. You probably have seen um, predicting cat images. Is that image a cat or a dog? And this is something where supervised learning comes in. So you give it a label mm -hmm. set. It's basically how we learn in school. So uh, a teacher tells you something, what's three times three, nine. So basically you learn by repetition. Yeah. And this is why you give that AI algorithms a lot of data. It learns from it and basically dissects the image into mathematical um, operations, ones and zeros. This is basically what it all comes down to. And there's some kind of fancy mathematics, mat mm -hmm. metrics, multiplications. And then from that, it learns this is a cat or this is not a cat or basically a dog. And then what we can do is we tell the algorithm, by the way, and now basically playing like domino. What is this? Is this a cat or a dog? And then basically the AI algorithm has to guess, is this a cat or a dog with some accuracy? It's basically a, a measurement of how accurate the uh, algorithm is. So is it 97% accurate? Is it 99% accurate? But most of the time, this accuracy doesn't actually mean that the algorithm is good enough, especially in safety critical applications. For example, if you have an AI model, which is being deployed in, a, in aerospace, you wouldn't probably only rely on an accuracy metric. You probably do some validation, some verification tests to make sure um, it's not targeting civilians, for example, or anything like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is basically this input-output relationship. And then what you can do with it is um, apply it to a variety of problems. We have regression task, we have classification task, we have clustering, we have recommendation systems. For example, if you watch a movie on Netflix, and you watch a specific type of movie more often, the algorithm would understand, ah, maybe uh, Jennifer likes uh, this type of genre very well. So yeah. I keep recommending her that type of video. This is also yeah. AI. Amazon is using the same thing. Okay. So people who bought this also bought this. Would you be interested in X, Y, Z? This is also AI behind the scenes. So um, Interesting. There's a, there's a ton of applications. But what's very important, especially for the listeners, is do you have the right type of data available? Because it could be image data, sensor data, tabular data, which sometimes is, is the same. So sensor data and tabular data. Is it 3D data? Something very complicated in engineering. For example, the example that I gave you with manufacturing, mm -hmm. this would be, for example, a 3D problem for AI. This is something that's not very trivial. And this is something Monolith is working on. And they even um, have a patent on that. So you give it 3D geometries and it would actually predict if something is manufacturable or not. And even to make it even more um, specific, imagine you have an electric vehicle a Tesla, for example, you put the Tesla in a wind tunnel and then you can kind of predict how, how much drag. So basically aerodynamic resistance that car has. And depending on how much wheels, sometimes they have like fancy looking wheels and this is done on purpose. So to reduce basically aerodynamic drag and increase the range of that electric vehicle. What you can do with AI is it generates new designs for that rim and basically tells you, I think, or I know that drag coefficient before even going to the wind tunnel is going to be 0 0.26 or 0 0.25. And then engineers without going to the wind tunnel, which costs like tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of dollars per week, and can just look at that tool telling them, okay, the drag coefficient is gonna be this, this, this. And then, okay, I'm probably not gonna test that rim. Or I'm specifically gonna test that rim in the wind tunnel. This is just a few um, examples I gave, but it's really exciting.